Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and today we will be reviewing a highly anticipated figure from the Mattel Jurassic World line, and it's going to be the Hammond Collection Giganotosaurus. Mattel has finally delivered the definitive version of this dinosaur, because the Strike and Roar one, it was just absolutely disappointing. It was too small compared to the other big theropod figures, it had a wide skull, and that stupid action feature that limited the posability. And because of that, fans have been um, desperately requesting a Hammond Collection version, especially since the Hammond Collection T-Rex was released. And I know everyone is literally begging for the Spinosaurus to be made. I mean, come on guys, we just gotta be patient. We know it's 100% going to happen, and hopefully it turns out great. So let's take a quick look at the packaging. It's looking awesome as always, with the uh, Hammond Collection title, a render of the figure, and the name of the dinosaur on the bottom right right here. Of course you got that amazing artwork with that orange lighting and the Dominion logo. On the back, some more renders of the figure, a short description, and the other Hammond Collection figures from this wave. So from left to right, we've got Claire Deering, Velociraptor Delta, Pyroraptor, and the Therizinosaurus, which I also have. So, so let's waste no time and see what this new Giganotosaurus has to offer. Here's the Giganotosaurus out of the packaging, and this thing is just phenomenal. Absolutely fantastic. This is what all Hammond Collection dinosaurs should be like. Just look at how movie accurate the paint job and the sculpt is, and look at all of that crispy detailing. And one of the best parts is the proper body proportions. The feet are not oversized, and the tail is pretty long. This shows you did not need oversized feet to make these bipedal dinosaurs stand. Even the plastic quality feels pretty good. One of my main issues with the Hammond collection is that most of the larger dinosaurs had cheap plastic, but this one feels pretty durable. And th this Giganotosaurus alongside the Therizinosaurus gives me high hope for the future of the Hammond collection. First, let's do some quick measurements. From head to tail, this dinosaur is about 29 inches long, and in this pose, he's about 10 inches tall at the tallest spike. So the Dominion Giganotosaurus was confirmed to be around 51 feet in length, so this would be in the 121 scale range. But if we're using the size estimates for the real Giganotosaurus, then this would be in that 118 scale. Starting off with the head sculpt, just look how beautiful and accurate it looks. With all of the skull openings, the scales, the spiky crests, and the uneven teeth, a Mattel has resorted to using a rubber teeth for their carnivorous dinosaurs. And I really love this idea because it's safe for kids to play with, and also it still retains that fierce, pointy look that'll appeal to older collectors. And looking at the interior of the mouth, it's just mainly smooth as always, but even the tongue has plenty of detailing. And then there's the glass eye, which I understand why some people don't like it because, in most angles, the pupil isn't visible and makes the dinosaur look dead inside. But thankfully for this figure, the pupil is visible in most lightings. Going down the figure, you can basically see every scale on this Giganotosaurus, from the small ones on the side of the torso and the underbelly, to the thick ones on the, on the back and on the legs as well. And looking at the arms, those very muscular arms, which also has small scales, there's also like these um, longer scales on the fingers. Now, my, I will say right now, um, my one issue with this uh, toy is that the arms seem too large in proportion to the body, but they really aren't that noticeable. And then there's the legs, there's the um, thick scales on the front of the legs, the rest has just has smaller ones. And there's the properly proportioned feet, and of course the dew claw. Going down the tail, there's less detailing on the tail, but it still looks fantastic. Then the spikes and the osteoderms continue all the way down the tail. And yeah, speaking of the spikes and osteoderms, this really, um, these large spikes right here makes this Giganotosaurus look like a concavenator. And then right here we've got all of the crocodilian-like osteoderms. And they all start around the top of the head. Moving on to the colors, like I've already said before, they are very movie accurate. I like how Mattel didn't just add the swampy green and the gray striping, but also plenty of brown dry brushing, and the yellow underbelly. I really adore this coloration. In my, in my opinion, this and the Carnotaurus has two of the best paint jobs in the entire Hammond collection. 
This Giganotosaurus sports 21 points of articulation. You can move the upper and lower jaws. Even the tongue can articulate. The head can move. So can the neck. Both of the arms, alongside its elbows and wrists. Both of the legs, the knees, the ankles, and the feet. And there's also two joints in the tail, with of course, the usual bendy wire. And for some reason, this tail feels a lot easier to pose. It feels like there's plenty of space between the rubber and the bendy wire. Now there's plenty of improvements in this articulation compared to the Hammond Collection T-Rex. For one, it doesn't have the waist articulation, which I'm really glad, it looked really unappealing to me, just having that big line throughout the torso, plus it was really loose as well. And I can't really see how Mattel can pull it off with this one, especially with those large back spikes. And you can actually move the upper and lower jaw separately, which allows for more posability. Starting off with our comparisons, here is the Strike and Roar Giganotosaurus from the Dominion toy line. And there is just no contest at all. Huge night and day difference. The Hammond Collection figure is literally superior in every category. And they both retail for $50, but the Strike and Roar clearly isn't worth $50. I don't know what Mattel was thinking when they were making this. Like, the skull is too wide. The action feature really limits the posability, the paint job just feels incomplete, the feet are oversized, and it just feels too small compared to the Dominion T-Rex toy it was released alongside. Here is the Nanmu Giganotosaurus, and I can't really compare the two, one of them is an adult collectible and the other is a kid's toy. Then here we have the Movie Mates figure, and the Captive Super Size. Let's do some other Hammond Collection dinosaurs, starting off with the T-Rex. Within two years, Mattel has improved so much with his line, and you can clearly see just by looking at these two side by side. And Mattel making an updated Rexy is definitely going to happen in the future, given that they've improved on their Velociraptors. And of course, it's only a matter of time before they make a Hammond Collection Spinosaurus and Indominus Rex. Here we have the Therizinosaurus, which I will be reviewing next, and the Carnotaurus. Next we have three of the medium-sized dinosaurs, the Ankylosaurus, the Ceratosaurus, and the Irritator. Lastly for Hammond Collection figures, we have the Jurassic Park 3 Alan Grant, Velociraptor Blue, and the Dimetrodon. Here we have the new epic evolution, Ceratosaurus and Mapusaurus. Next we have the very heavy Beast of the Mesozoic T-Rex. Last but not least, here's the Collecte Xyphactinus and Mini Xyphactinus. Well, there you have it everyone, that was my review on the Mattel Jurassic World Dominion Hammond Collection Giganotosaurus. And what else do I have to say about this? It is just a stellar toy, screen accurate sculpt and paint job, plenty of articulation, pretty durable plastic, and of course, crispy amazing detailing. I will say, this is my new favorite Mattel Jurassic World figure. The Battle Damage Plesiosaurus had that title for a while, but this Giganotosaurus is now taking it. If you haven't guessed it already, I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. If you want one for yourself, you can, you can get it from Target's website or the store itself. I went to Target yesterday to look for a few other figures, and I saw the price tags for the Giganotosaurus and the Therizinosaurus. So if you guys enjoyed this review, leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, it really helps out my channel. And I will see you all in the next video.